Hey guys, it's Caster here again. Welcome to another video review. So today I'll be reviewing uh, a series of mouse pads, actually, from a company called Rantopad and uh, the Mouse Feed, uh, respectively. So just a little bit into Rantopad. They're actually quite an old company, uh, established back in 2004, 2005. Uh, they are a Chinese company based in China, and they have been making uh, a lot of mouse pads over the years, and mainly distributed in China. So the mouse pads uh, are not really sold overseas, or haven't been sold overseas actually quite until uh, quite recently. So I think they sell on Amazon, they sell on eBay, and there's also a couple other sites uh, they, that sell and some other distributors that they sell. But uh, Rancho Pad, uh, they really sold mouse pads which were fairly... Um, Maybe on the cheaper end, but it's not really like high-end mouse pads. Uh, not like Artisan, not like Razer or Steel Series. They're not that big of a, a brand, I think. But at least uh, they are. They do sell uh, their mouse pads are fairly cheap, and you do get your value for it. And they really target that kind of low to mid tier segment. Uh, so here today, I'm going to be reviewing a couple of mouse pads, actually, uh, four mouse pads from Rental Pad. Uh, they actually sent me some. Uh, I actually requested for some samples and they kindly sent me some so just to try them out. Uh, they make a variety of mouse pads I guess uh, for all the way from cloth to uh, alu aluminium right here and they also make a lot of like other like hybrid plastic mouse pads as well that you can see uh, and also a variety of other uh, things. So I was actually quite interested by like their line or their series of mouse pads. They, they did have a lot of different mouse pads. But I got received them, gave them a try, played some Dota on them. So uh, here we go with the review of the mouse pads. So what I'm going to be doing is actually I'm going to be reviewing uh, all four mouse pads actually from Rantopad. Uh, respectively, they are the H1X, uh, the Rantopad uh, ATS Plus, which is their aluminium pad. Uh, the GTS, which is a hybrid kind of a plastic uh, pad, and another called the GTR. So they have uh, fairly interesting names, I guess, and they apparently they make like a, a lot of different mouse pads. So I'm just going to be going through them one by one and doing a simple comparison of the price, the overall build quality, overall surface quality, and the performance of the mouse pads. So first off is actually the Rantopad Pad H1X. I think this is the new series of uh, mouse pad, the cloth pads. So you do see uh, it's a fairly simple. Uh, it has a very, very interesting. It kind of looks like uh, the razor pads actually. It takes a braided sides. They did braid it so that uh, it doesn't uh, damage as easily. The bottom they use a normal uh, rubber grip, uh, as seen in a lot of like razor pads and a lot of other mouse pads as well. And I think the surface is actually some sort of uh, tightly woven. Uh, 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 cloth actually so it's not seen in the a lot of the other uh, cheap cloth mouse pads that you find in a lot of Chinese uh, companies uh, made from Chinese companies and it's not quite similar as the Razer Goliathus for example I would actually recommend it uh, it seems feels much more akin to maybe the Artisan uh, the high the Heian series but it's not as uh, rough but it's actually quite smooth I think out of all four mouse pads in terms of the uh, low price point uh, that they're really aiming for, I think this one's probably uh, the nicest one or the most uh, best value for money, I personally think. So the H1X actually comes in three different sizes. It comes in the small, the medium, and the large. So I have the large one here. The large one is uh, 420 by 280 by 4 millimeters, and the mil uh, medium is 350 by 240. The small is 280 by 220. So you do have a wide range of uh, options when it comes to this mouse pad. As far as uh, price goes, I think uh, online you can probably get this for about 15 bucks US, which is absolutely like a steal. I think for the price point, uh, you are expecting something which is not extremely, extremely high quality, but it is uh, quite comfortable and the surface is fairly smooth uh, in terms of the performance. Uh, it does uh, have quite a quick stop. You can quite control it quite well. It's not meant to be extremely smooth, but uh, at least uh, in terms of the texture, it's very, very smooth, but it's not meant to be fast. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. I think uh, this pad uh, in China maybe sells for like 10 US, 12 US. Uh, I think it was shipped overseas, it's probably about 15 US. So you are looking at a very, very good value pad. This is actually for the large, so I think for a medium pad or smaller pad, you can actually get it for cheaper. So overall for the H1X, uh, a strong recommend actually at its price point. Not very expensive. Uh, you're not looking at $40, $50 mouse pads from Razer, but definitely a fairly good alternative uh, from Rancho Bed. I also believe this comes in a different color as well. It comes in a, a green and also a, a lime green and also this uh, fluorescent orange. So um, overall for this first one, strong recommend. Uh, quite like it. Now moving on to the second mouse pad is the Rancho Pad ATS. So plus. So this is an aluminum pad. This is a kind of a 
uh, tried emulating the SteelSeries SX from the old days. Actually, she still have a pad, uh, but it's actually quite worn out now. Um, this is fairly small. It's not very big, as you can see in the size, uh, as compared to my Zoe uh, Z12. Um, in terms of uh, comparisons to the maybe the SX or maybe I'm looking at the Manticore, uh, this pad is also. Um, in terms of maybe I'll start with the price actually. The price is priced at uh, 20 US or 17 US, so still fairly cheap compared to the Manticore, compared to other aluminium pads. So you can treat this as a fairly uh, cheap option, I guess, for aluminium pads as far as aluminium pads go. Um, I think it's not as smooth actually. Uh, it's actually quite smooth, but I think uh, if you just touch the surface, I personally think it's slightly rough and that uh, it does cause a lot of friction, causes a lot of uh, um, that kind of a little bit of a chalkboard noise. So unless you're installing a completely new uh, mat feet, sometimes it would scratch your feet quite a lot. And it, it may, there's a high chance, actually, I've used it a bit. There's a high chance for it scratching and there's a high chance for that kind of chalkboard sound, eerie, eerie sound to happen. Um, but I think you, if you do install new mouse feet, I mean, uh, it's not my strongest recommend, but for 20 bucks, this is you are getting uh, what you're paying for, I guess. Um, the surface is quite small. I think it looks fairly cool as an aluminum pad. Uh, actually, feels quite nice uh, in terms of uh, this uh, drag, the glide, and stuff. Controls quite well. However, I personally don't, uh, not a too big of a fan of maybe the sides. It's a little bit small, and also it does. Um, feel a little bit rough actually on the surface which does cause that kind of like an eerie sound. So overall ATS uh, for 20 bucks if you want to try an aluminium pad it's not a bad option but I personally um, this are, I'm not as big of a fan as this mouse pad maybe as some of their other options. Um, anything else? Uh, actually both sides um, in terms of the build quality they both use aluminium on both sides and on the other side it does use uh, some stuck uh, this plastic uh, rubber feet in order to stop it from gliding. So overall, um, it's, it's okay. Not a strong recommend, but uh, for 20 bucks, you are getting what you're paying for. Now moving on to the Rantopad GTS, and I actually will be doing this review alongside the Rantopad GTR. So this is uh, their, I guess, hybrid offering, similar to that of maybe uh, the Mionex, the, the Propellus or something. Uh, so it's, it's quite a floppy pad. Uh, it does uh, use a coated plastic, which is... Uh, the GTR is actually slightly rougher than the GTS, but it's very, very similar in feel. So if you can see, it's quite floppy. And then you can see the GTS, quite floppy as well. So they come in, uh, I think, this is the side, but they come in different colors. The GTS, slightly smaller in size compared to the GTR, you can see. And you can see my Zoe ZA12 for a comparison in terms of the size. But uh, in terms, if you, if you can uh, hear this on this hyper pad, and it slides, it slides very, very quickly. It's a little bit like almost like the uh, uh, the artisan, uh, the really super fast uh, Shinden. Uh, I think it feels like a Shinden, but not as glossy, not as uh, glassy. I think. But this is a hybrid, more of a plastic feel. Slides very, very quickly. It's much more hard to control. Uh, but uh, definitely quite smooth uh, and it's quite a fast pad in terms of the GTS. For the GTR, it is a slightly larger pad compared to the GTS and um, slightly slower uh, speed, uh, still as smooth, slightly slower speed, a little bit better control, but as you can see, uh, it's like kind of like a hockey puck. I feel like the GTR, uh, as I said, it, it is a slightly slower um, and it's actually a little bit rougher than the GTS in terms of just the control the speed. So if you want something a little bit faster in terms of the plastic, a uh, quick, uh, almost like I feel it's a little bit uncontrollable uh, in terms of how fast it is actually. But if you like that kind of fast uh, movement and smooth movement, GTS is quite nice. If you want kind of a slower, uh, still a very smooth feel, but a slower uh, speed, I would actually recommend the GTR. I'm currently using this uh, Zoe uh, optical sensor, so it does is compatible with both optical and laser. Both would work. Uh, last thing I'm going to talk about is actually the price point. So both these pads you can find on Amazon for about 15 bucks to 18 bucks. Uh, really, really cheap options uh, if you just want something that uh, can do well. That plasticky, little bit of a hybrid plastic feel, glides quite smoothly, glides quite click. Uh, I would recommend the GTS GTR because you are just paying 15 to 18 uh, US for them. Very, very cheap option. Uh, definitely quite a recommend at this price point at least. Uh, I think if you're looking for a similar uh, hybrid options for more um, 
uh, expensive uh, companies such as Razer, Steel Series, uh, you're looking at 30 bucks, 40 bucks, but you are shelling out money. They're almost like the Apple, and this is almost more like a cheaper option uh, for mouse pads. So uh, overall, for these, the Rancho Pad GTS and GTR, still quite a good recommend at its price point. Last but not least, uh, I'm going to be doing a review on their feet actually. So Rantopad have always been making mouse feet, but they've never made uh, as many uh, variations of mouse feet as Tiger Gaming Online Games and other uh, companies actually. So uh, Glidex, this is like I guess their uh, standard new packaging, the Glidex. It's quite simple, it just comes in a pack and comes in, uh, it's very very flimsy and you can see that uh, the shape of the mouse feet is actually uh, shaped after the IE3, the IO 1.1, and the WMO. So um, they don't really make other mouse feet, and even in their pictures, they recommend uh, just putting these uh, pads onto the bottom of your mouse feet in whatever shape or form, and it still does work. In fact, like uh, unlike Hotline Games, which they make dedicated mouse feet, even if you put these uh, mouse pads like in uh, different uh, parts of the mouse on the bottom of the mouse. Uh, I didn't use it here, but you put it into the different pads at the bottom of the mouse, it would still work. Um, in general, uh, I opened up, and basically what you get is actually what you get here. Uh, you get basically one, two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you get like 20 pieces. Uh, 20 pieces, you put four on one mouse, you're looking at uh, five mice that you can actually shape this on. However, uh, I personally uh, don't like it very much. I mean, the packaging is a little bit flimsy, and once it comes out, it's actually, uh, actually the mouse, the feet actually come off. It is standard PTFE, and uh, if you look at it, uh, there's nothing too special about it. Uh, I, gave, I did stick on uh, some of my mice, uh, one of my mice, and I've tried to use it. I mean, it's pretty standard, it's still PTFE, it still works uh, just as good as any, uh, I think. But it's just, uh, I don't know if the uh, cut of the mouse feet are actually cut that well. It feels like uh, pre it's pretty standard. There's nothing too special about it. Uh, I think it's a fairly cheap option. I don't know if they're selling these on Amazon, but if they are, I'm sure they're selling it for quite cheap. I think in China, you can probably get it for a couple bucks uh, for just a slice. And these are pretty standard uh, mouse feet that come in packaging. Uh, which is quite, the packaging I guess is quite nice, but I think once you take it out and use it, it just does, does the job, it's very cheap, um, you aren't expecting anything fancy, so for a couple bucks, uh, the Glidex uh, does work quite well. So, so in conclusion, hope you guys enjoyed that video review of uh, Rantopad and that introduction to Rantopad and their mouse pads. Uh, for cheap options for mouse pads, they're definitely quite a good option to consider, but if you're willing to shell out uh, a little uh, 10 or 20 extra US uh, basically paying like double the price for a nicer mouse pad. I would recommend it, but if you're looking for a cheap option, they're definitely uh, a good option to go, actually. So, hope you guys enjoyed that video review. Uh, if you want to visit my uh, website at itechtech.com or my eBay store at stores.ebay.com slash itechtech for mouse feed and other needs. Hope you guys enjoyed that video review, and um, thanks for watching again.